only day to day. So whatever you've got to do, you've got a lovely day to do it in the next day. And I you got to me, got to do, and it's big, 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 Mr. Fitzsimmons has had his last eggs benedict, I fear. Hello, Simon Evans here. Simon, it's James. Hello, James. What can I do for you? Have you heard about the warden? No. What's the old sod done well, now? He's died. That's what he's done. God. Yes, yeah, he's died. While he... While he's having his breakfast. I'm sorry. I... Yes, it's a heart attack. A bit young for that, wasn't he? Well, that's the trouble with the ticker. It never knows the time. Well, the show's about to begin now. No mistake, Simon. Poor old Fitzsimmons. He never smoked or drank for fear of dying. And then he goes and does it while eating. I hope this table's all right for you. This is fine. It's my favourite eating place, actually. Well, one of them. Large meals, low price. Good food, though, very good. Mm, I certainly hope so. I wouldn't have brought you otherwise. And are you worried about prices? <laughs> no. My editor pays working expenses, of course, but why waste? I don't see the point in wasting money. I feel the same about time. I hope this isn't going to take too long. Oh, it's been very good of you to give me your time, Mr Montague. I appreciate it. Mm. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Can I get you something to drink while you study the menu? Uh, Mr Montague? Uh, uh, some red wine, I think. Fine, fine. We'll have a bottle of brew. Uh, certainly, sir. I shall be a moment. Well, now, uh, shall I start with the questions? I hope there's only going to be a few. Oh, certainly. It is what you said on the telephone. And I'll be true to my word. And as I say, I'm grateful for your time. Well, in the way that you think a good meal for a little money is a bargain, I feel the same about a good meal for a few questions. <laughs> right, then. Tell me first about All Saints College. Uh, well, it's rather unusual in that there are no students and few educational responsibilities to take into account. Created by Henry III as a graduate-only foundation. Some of its fellows are resident, but uh, many are dispensed all over the world. I suppose you could call it a sort of medieval think tank. Ah, the wine. Uh, your wine, gentlemen. Uh, would you like me to pour a little? Uh, no, that's fine, thank you. We'll help ourselves. I was just told by another waiter, sir, that you are Mr Lang. I'd like to say how much I enjoy your articles each week. Oh, good heavens, fame! And what is it exactly that you like? Well, I suppose we all like to know what's going on behind the scenes, don't we? Are you ready to order yet? I'd certainly recommend the stuffed aubergines. Another five minutes, I think. I'll come back later then. Excuse me. <laughs> right. I'll pour, shall I? Well, here's to us and a good article. <laughs> One that pleases the waiter, anyway. Mm, cheers. Now then, Mr Montague, the college. Well, as I was saying, it's regarded as something of a... a medieval think tank, I believe you said. Uh, yes, 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 that's right. But indeed, its critics will say that it's gone further and further back into history. However, its fellows are some of the leading figures in the country, and indeed internationally. For example, there's Willie Henshaw, Privy Councillor, Queen's Council, Knight Bachelor, Chairman of the two Royal Commissions, author of a major report to the Governor and Court of the Bank of England, and an international corporate lawyer. Uh, Mr Montague. And I then there's Lord Siegenthal, a recently retired Cabinet Minister. Mr Montague. And Matthew Moore, regarded as the finest Middle Eastern archaeologist of his generation. Those are just some of the names. But as you can see, the college is rather a unique place. Uh, it's Mr history... Montague, excuse me, but I know the history of the college. Then why did you ask me here? I thought that's what you wanted to talk about. Tell me about the warden. Uh, well, that too is a position which is rather unique, despite the college being described by many as archaic. Nevertheless, to be its warden elevates that person to the status of an unofficial chairman of the establishment. That's not what I want to know, Mr Montague. Oh? Uh, what is it you do want to know? I want to know about his death. I beg your pardon? Look, I know he died of a heart attack. Everybody does. What everybody doesn't know is... What kind of cat has been put amongst the pigeons by that death? That's what I want to Look, know. Look, wait a moment. I... I mean, there's going to be one hell of a struggle for the position of new warden, isn't there? I'd like to know about it. I'd like you to tell me. Mr Lang, on the telephone you said to me that you wished to talk about the history of a college. Isn't that what we're doing? You know perfectly well that I cannot discuss any forthcoming election for the post of warden. Who are the favourites? I will talk about the history of a college and nothing else. Who are the favourites? You must excuse me. I'm leaving. I came under a misunderstanding. Are the names you mentioned candidates for the post? 
could be quite a fight. Look, I have nothing further to say, and what is more, I hope that you have forgotten what I've said so far. Uh, Willie Henshaw, Lord Siegenthal, Matthew Moore. Sorry, but I'm a reporter, you see. Names stick like glue. Mm, a scandalmonger is what you are. I see now why the waiter said he enjoyed your articles. What was it he said? We all like to know what's going on behind the scenes. And we do. And it's my job to find out. And it's my job to see that All Saints College maintains a certain dignity and does not sell itself for aubergines. Mr Montague, we don't really have a problem here. Mm, I certainly don't. Goodbye. If you just told me the facts of the matter, it may help prevent some of the what you call scandal-mongering. Go to hell, Mr Lang. I'm sorry. Go to hell. Are you one of the candidates? I'm telling you nothing more. <laughs> you told me nothing I didn't already know as it is. And what about the names you didn't tell me? What about Tom Ducassis, who's off to the Library of Congress any day now? Max von Ehrenberg, who's off to the archives in Venice? And there's Susan Shines, one of the few women fellows elected. What about Simon Evans? You didn't mention him either. What about them? I just want to know how they feel about the election. Who they're supporting, and why, and why not? Who's the favourite for the job, Mr Montague? <laughs> I mean, what's the big secret? For God's sake, I'm not asking you to tell me who really shot Kennedy. Shall I tell you something, Mr Lang? You're not a reporter at all. You're a little nosy bastard sniffing around for trouble. And shall I tell you something, Mr Montague? I think it's you who's favourite for the job. Am I right? And what if I am? <sighs> Nothing. It's not me who's making a big fuss about this. Thanks for the wine. Goodbye. <sighs> Hardly touch the stuff. Bloody waste of money. Is your friend leaving, sir? So it would seem, so it would seem. Are you staying to eat, sir? What else is there to do at 1.15 on a dark afternoon? Yes, I'm staying to eat. Then may I take your order, sir? Tell me, my friend, the reason you like my articles. Is it because you enjoy poking your inquiring little nose into other people's mess-ups? Well, I wouldn't put it quite like that, sir. No, don't suppose you would. Your order, sir? Well, for a start, you can stuff your aubergines. Gentlemen, I know we're not all here, more's the pity, but as senior fellow, I think I have to say that while, of course, we are all excessively burdened by our responsibilities to a grateful world, the time has come to put on our collective caps. I hope you all have your thinking caps with you somewhere and haven't altogether lost them on the road to prestige. I don't think this is a funny matter, Lord Medway. Did I say it was? Quite the contrary. In fact, the choosing of a new warden is a task to which we must apply ourselves with a seriousness we reserve normally to the choosing of people we invite to dinner. Then let's get on with it. Exactly. Tell me, gentlemen, what do you think of the candidates so far and their chances? Well, speaking for myself, it looks as though it's going to be a real battle of bastards. Or perhaps I should say it's going to be a bastard of a battle. Yes, perhaps you should, dear. <laughs> I would have thought, though, that Montague would be the obvious choice. Uh, yes, he'll uh, certainly take the first ballot, there's no doubt of that. Um, how do you feel about Simon Evans? Well, he's a very popular chap, of course, but sometimes that works against a candidate. And he has the look of someone not really expecting to win. As opposed to Matthew Moore, who has the look of someone who can't possibly be defeated. Arrogant mm. bugger. Good track record, though. Now, granted, there's quite a few candidates, and they've all got records of which to be excessively proud, but there's certainly something about Moore and the way he wears those endless medals of archaeological merit around his neck that makes him very much a front-runner. <laughs> and what's more, he desperately wants to be warden. Yes, to tell you the truth, his eagerness is already rather sickening. However, I still think James Montague is the one who will come out tops. Hello, James Montague here. Oh, hello. Um, well, yes, yes, of course. Uh, come round straight away. Mm. No, 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 not at all. I'll, uh, I'll see you. One moment. Ah, uh, Simon. Uh, come on in then. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, no, I was uh, I was going to phone you anyway. It's uh, about the election. Yes, yes, I thought it might be. Is it true? Well, if you mean, am I not taking part? Yes, yes, it's perfectly true. You're really not standing? No, more than that, I'm not even going to express a preference as to who has the post. I'm simply going to sit back and watch the fun. Anyway, what are you worrying about, my dear boy? Hmm? Leaves the field more open for you. I don't think I'm in with much of a chance, James. Oh, nonsense. Don't underestimate yourself. You stand a very good chance. But there's a lot of tough opposition. Well, of course, you'd expect that for such a post. I'm still surprised that you've backed out. Mm -hmm. You were the favoured candidate, you know, and rightly so. Maybe, but I don't have the guts for combat anymore. 
I don't think I do either. Yes. And who do you think does? Well, Matthew Moore, certainly. Oh, yes, dear old Matthew. A man so riddled with ambition it seeps from him like sweat. I think he wants to be warden more than anything in the world. Except perhaps ruler of that world. It's going to take a damn good candidate to beat him, that's for sure. And are you that candidate? Well, like I said, I'm very doubtful. And after all, there are quite a few others throwing in their caps. You know, I have a feeling, though, that quite a few of those caps are going to be without homes, uh, by which I mean there's going to be another meeting of the fellows in the main library tonight, and I expect a few heads to start rolling. In fact, despite your rather low and totally unjustified opinion of yourself, I shouldn't be at all surprised if when we get down to the third or fourth ballot, the contest isn't simply between Matthew Moore and yourself. Anyway, it's all up to the great and goodly fellows, isn't it? And I can't tell you how pleased I am to be simply a happy and unbruised spectator to the contest. Well, thank you for calling, Simon, telling me that you believe I'll be missed. I appreciate it very much. I've got a feeling you care for the college more than most. Thank you. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll let you get back to Mr. Mozart. And now we come to Willie Henshaw. I don't have to remind anyone here of his distinguished career, truly outstanding, and he will, of course, be receiving the backing of all the lawyers who make up the college's <laughs> non-resident fellows. There's no doubt he has strong support. <laughs> Let's um, really get to know him, though, shall we? I suggest a series of informal lunches be set up for him with us as his hosts. The way to a man's mind is often through his mouth. I don't think Ziegenthal's going to make it through the next ballot, do you? Not sure, Leo, old dear. He certainly has support, and he has been at the college 40 years. Yes, but when you think about it, every damn thing he's set his hand to has ended up in the dustbin. <laughs> <laughs> and that, I feel, is where his candidature is going. Montague here. And Martin Lang here. Remember me, Mr Montague, your nosy reporter friend. Uh, what do you want, Mr Lang? I'm very busy. I hear there's quite a little war going on. Like to tell me about it. Now you're no longer in the run yourself. No, I would not. I hear old Willie Henshaw has suddenly been dropped like a hot potato. Why was that? Mm, goodbye, Mr Lang. Come on. You owe me. Owe you? For what? Well, glass of wine. Half a glass, anyway. Look! I'm only a poor reporter, Mr Montague, trying to make an honest living. And did your honesty prevent you from claiming for a meal for two, I wonder? No, of course not. Then I think I owe you nothing, Mr Lang. Goodbye. Matthew here, Simon. Oh, this is something of a surprise. I've been rather impressed by your performance. Impressed and worried? You're a little too close for comfort. It looks as though it stands a very good chance of ending up with you and me fighting it out vote for vote. Yes, it looks like it. Why are you phoning, Matthew? I just want you to know that I want the post of warden very badly. I want you to know that. Yes. I want you to burn it into your mind, Simon, dear boy. Burn it very deeply into your mind. Very, very deeply. Look, what the hell is this? I want you to be completely clear that if something should go wrong for me, things could get very nasty indeed. What do you mean? I mean, very nasty. That's what I mean. Well, I must say, James, this election has turned into a right old pickle. It certainly has. I mean, here we have Simon Evans, only two votes short of the two-thirds majority needed, and Matthew Moore, damn sure he's not going to release a single one of his supporters to break the deadlock. Cheers. As you Cheers. say, a right old pickle. We'll have to put heavier pressure on Moore. And we'll be wasting our time, and you know it. In that case, it will simply force a reference to the college visitor, won't it? Oh, no, we mustn't have that. We won't have a choice. Look, I'm not having the fate of this college put in the hands of an ignorant bishop. Then what do you suggest? I suggest I change my mind about not expressing a preference and start throwing a bit of weight around. And whom are you going to support? Hello? Simon? Yes, speaking. I've just been informed of the results. Congratulations. 
What? I said congratulations. You mean? I mean you've won. Of course. It's almost unanimous in the end. Oh, God. I suppose I'll have to get used to calling you warden now, won't I? I want you to be completely clear that if something should go wrong for me, things could get very nasty. Very nasty indeed. Oh, come on. Now you'll have to get used to being called warden. It's not that. In fact, I got used to being called warden after the first six seconds. What is it, then? I'm worried about Matthew Moore. Oh, in what way? Well, it's been a week now since the election, and in that time we've not exchanged so much as a grunt across High Table. Oh, I think he really hates me for taking the wardenship away from no, him. No, I don't think you need worry. Well, I wish I shared your optimism, James. Look, let's, let's just sit here for a minute. You know, naturally, Matthew was bitterly disappointed at not becoming warden. I mean, it's hardly been a secret how much he coveted the post. Nevertheless, I've known him since he was an undergraduate, which I confess is rather longer than either of us cares to remember, and I'm sure he'll behave himself. Well, as tomorrow is the final day of the academic year, he'll have a chance to show his true colours at my party, won't oh, he? he'll be fine. I hope you're right. Obviously, I'm uneasy on a personal level, but also, this being my first warden party, I don't want more to turn up simply to exacerbate the tensions, the residual tensions left over from the election. And this college means a great deal to me, as you know, and the tradition of the party tomorrow also means a great deal to me. And I don't want the anger and disappointment of one man turning the occasion into a slanging match. No, it won't happen, I'm sure. Although, I do have to admit, of course, that where Matthew Moore is concerned, one can never be really sure. You're beginning to sound less optimistic, James. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Come on, let's continue our walk, shall we? Hello, Willie. It's James here, James Montague. Yes, oh, I'm fine, thanks. Listen, are you going to Warden's party tomorrow? Oh, good. Well, it's the last chance I'll get to see you before October, and I'd like to have a chat with you about a book I'm working on at the moment. Yes. Oh, that's excellent, Willie. Uh, by the way, um, have you seen Matthew Moore lately? Yes. How do you think he is? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, well, he's going to be there tomorrow, and, um, between you and me, I'm rather worried. <laughs> ah, James, good to see you. Yes, and you. Not a bad turnout, eh? Not bad at all. But you know we'd have had one more if the Campuchians hadn't opened the border yesterday. Mm -hmm. Young Weems shot off like a bat out of hell. <laughs> Should be an Angkor by now. Oh, and of course, uh, Kid Brown's in class, huh? Oh, so he is, pity. Translating? Indeed, mantras. Mm. Don't tell the chapel clerks. Indeed not. <laughs> well, must circulate. See you later. Yeah. Well, 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 it's Leo Dart, James. and how are you coping with life? To tell you the truth, I'm still recovering from that bloody awful election. Yeah, and you thought it was going to be me, it I It would hear. have been if you'd entered. You should have done. Well, I prefer life as much on the sidelines as possible. Well, you certainly entered into the fray at the end, didn't you? I simply did my best to see that a choice was finally made. Yes, I think you've been crossed off Moore's Christmas card list, though. <laughs> but then, haven't we all? Oh. Just look at him. Have you ever seen such a depressed-looking person in your life? God, he looks as though he's just one Norway in a raffle. <laughs> I suppose it must be killing him that we finally decided that a grandson of a coal miner and son of a grammar school scholarship pilot killed in a bombing raid over Arkham fell more clearly into the traditional image of all saints. Mm. Well, it's over now, thank God. Let's hope he doesn't machine gun us all. Amen to that. Oh, by the way, where's Jack Ainsley? Is he coming? Uh, no, he isn't. In fact, he's many, many miles away. At this very moment, he's probably being buggered by little boys in Morocco. I don't think I heard that. Oh, God, look. Moore's walking to the trestles. He's going to speak. Oh. Well, here we go. I, uh, I wonder if I may have your attention for a moment or two. You bet you can. As most of you know, I leave for Babylon later today. Lucky old you. What are the ladies here going to do without you? Oh, I'm sure they'll survive. <laughs> My God, he's smiling. The fact is... I've got to get out there because... You can't stand any of us. <laughs> Not at all. It's because someone has to make sure that the French aren't wrecking the site as they rebuild it, and in this case, that someone is yours truly. Uh, you've always been our hero, Matthew. Ah, so what happened to the crosses by my name, then? I cannot believe this. Now, 
Apart from my going to Babylon, you also know that a week ago I lost one of the harder fought elections in this college's recent history. What I want to do before I go away, before many of us go away, is to settle something. I think it is about time that we, I, drank a toast to the new warden and welcomed him properly to his high and arduous office. Oh. Oh. Doctors, I ask you to join me in raising your glasses to the warden of all saints. The warden of all saints. This morning I would have bet a million this wouldn't happen. Warden? Warden, would you just come beside me for a moment? That's it. Now, you see that I have a small black figurine here with me, one, in fact, that I treasure greatly. I acquired it on my, well, should I say, ah, last dig in Syria. Warden, I would very much like for you to accept this as a gift from me to you, a gift which I hope with all my heart expresses to you the fact that I do not hold and will never hold a single grudge. Warden, this is for you. Oh. Matthew, this is really most kind of you. I'm afraid I don't have an export license to go with it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised, Matthew. I always thought you archaeologist chaps were nothing but tomb robbers. <laughs> I mean, the reason I came to see you is because although we're among the few fellows left in full residence, I seem to be seeing remarkably little of you. Yes, I'm sorry, James. It's just that although I don't have a term time schedule to keep to at the moment, I nevertheless do seem to be in demand socially quite a bit. Oh, I'm not blaming you. I'm far from it. I mean, after all, I'm up to my ears in preparing that book of mine on Champagnon's work. I just thought it time I popped in for a quick hello. Is everything all right? Oh, indeed. <laughs> Thousands of letters, of course. Mm? I tell you, most of my invitations seem to come from rather fetching ladies who are high up in the social scene. Oh. I'll just put these in my uh, post tray. Mm. So, everything's certainly all right. It's amazing how attractive to the opposite sex I suddenly am since becoming warden. Yes, I bet. <laughs> Sorry you didn't apply for the post now? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, if there's one thing I prefer to sex, it's good food and wine. Well, that's two things. Yeah, well, yes, so there you are. Believe me, the attention of ladies comes a pretty poor third on the list of things I enjoy. Shame on you, James. Listen, why don't we have lunch together sometime next week? We could go to that restaurant on Ambly Street. Do you, uh... Do you like seafood? I love it. Yeah, well, they do. Mussels in mustard and brandy sauce there. And I tell you, Warden, old friend, it defeats all competition. Uh, uh, Wednesday, then. Mm. We go on Wednesday. Good. Well, I'll let you get on with your letters. I'll get back to the book I'm reading. You know, there's nothing like treating oneself to a few hours with a first-class book. So sex, in fact, comes forth. Oh, yes, so it does. And I have a feeling if I really put my mind to it, I'd think a lot of other things too. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, take care of yourself. I look forward to our meal together next week. And so do I. Thanks for coming round, James. Very nice of you. No, not at all. You take it easy with those ladies now. I do my best. Uh, be seeing you then. <sighs> Dear sir... I regret that in the circumstances. Go away. Go away. Go away. What on earth's wrong? Wrong? No, nothing. It, it was nothing. But I heard you crying. Go away. You, you, you it, sounded. It, it, it was nothing, really. A wasp. It, it was wasp. That's all. Wasp? Yes, I. I can't bear them. I was trying to swat it. That's all it was. Anyway, I, I managed to get it, thank heavens. Sorry I worried you, it's just this terrible phobia of mine. Are you sure you're all right? Absolutely. I must say, you look as though you've just seen a ghost. You're white as a sheet. I know, silly, isn't it? Anyway, as I say, I'm fine now. Well, if you say so. All right, I'll, uh, I'll get back to my book. That's it. See you Thursday, then. Well, Wednesday? Yes, yes, of course. Wednesday. Look, if I were you, I'd make yourself a cup of very sweet tea, sit back and relax for a while, get some colour back in your cheeks. I'll do that. Wednesday, yes. Wednesday. I'll remember, don't worry. For God's sake, what's wrong? There's no solidity. There's no... What? Please go, James. 
Please leave me now, please. Look, what is all this nonsense? James, I'm asking you to leave me, please. Oh, well, if that's what you want. If that's... if that's what you really want... There are things to be done, you see. Things to be dealt with, you understand. No, I can't say I do understand. I'll see you Wednesday in the restaurant. All right. Goodbye, Warden. Oh, God. Oh, God, help me. Lord Medway. Mm -hmm. oh, Lord Medway, tell me, um, have you have you seen the warden of late? I talked to him briefly a few days ago, but that's all. Seems to be keeping himself pretty much to himself. The odd social event will get him out of his office for a while, but that's it. Why do you ask? Well, I'm I'm a bit worried about him. He doesn't seem too good to me at the moment. I'm glad you say that. Uh, in in a way. So I've noticed it myself, but I thought perhaps I was just imagining things. Uh, what do you think's wrong? Well, I, I don't know, but he certainly seems to be under some awful stress of some kind. I hope it's not that he can't cope with the job. It'd be terrible if we've chosen the wrong man. Uh, talking of which, did you hear that Matthew has had to postpone his visit to Babylon yet again? Yes, I have heard. Seems to be taking it very well. Although the thought of those French wrecking the site must be burning him up a bit. Has... Has he said anything about the warden's behaviour? Yes. I spoke to him about it, in fact. He said he thought we were overreacting and that all Simon wanted was a little more time to get used to the job. Uh, early days yet, he said. Give the poor chap until all saints at least. He's sure everything will be all right by then. Matthew's being very supportive of the warden, isn't he? Mm, yes, he certainly is. Well, let's hope he's right and we're wrong and that there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> I've tried phoning him several times. Each time I get no reply. Nor me. I haven't even seen him. Go away. Go away. I've tried phoning him several times. It doesn't seem to be wrong. I've tried phoning him several times. I've tried phoning him several times. I've tried phoning him several times. A price to pay. Always a price to pay. Go away. Always a price to pay. Oh God, the walls. The walls are melting. Help me. Please help me. Someone help me. Someone. Someone. Are you sure I can't get you a drink, sir? Oh, why not? I can't just sit here watching people enjoy themselves. The thought of those muscles waiting to be eaten is driving me crazy. If my friend doesn't show up soon, I'll, uh, I'll eat alone and to hell with it. What would you like to drink, sir? James, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. My God! What's happened to you? I couldn't help it, James. Something just... No, no, I don't mean your lateness. I mean, I mean you... Uh, waiter, um, uh, bring us a bottle of the same wine, would you? Yes, sir. Warden, I... I don't know what to say. What do you mean? Well, you know perfectly well your appearance. I'm, I'm sorry, you must be very ill. I'm Simon to hell with calling you warden. I'm speaking to you now as a friend. A friend who really cares for you. I have to say that you, you look terrible. But don't worry. What do you mean? What do you mean, don't worry? Your face is gaunt, your lines have appeared, and, uh, and you've got about as much grey hair as Auburn. I, I can't believe the way you look. I, I've not been sleeping well. Not sleeping well? My God, Simon, you'd have to go without sleep for a year to look the way you do. I'm all right. Just leave me alone. I'm sorry, Simon. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not this time. I, I should have pursued the matter last week when I heard you calling out in your office. But I let the matter ride. But not now. Not now. What is it you want from me? The truth. That's what I want. Well, the truth about what? Well, only you know that. Yes. Only I know that. So? Here we are, gentlemen. Your wine. Do you want no, to No, 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 no. We damn well don't. Very well, sir. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I, I shouldn't have spoken like that. It's, uh, it's perfectly it's... all right, sir. I do understand. Thank you. I'll come back later. Now listen, the truth. What's getting to you? Oh, James. Now come out with it. Out with it, Simon. Well, it is to do with sleep. What should I say? Dreams. What kind of dreams? Terrible dreams. Oh, God, such terrible dreams. What happens? Nothing that makes much sense, really. Everything just has an awful sort of insubstantiality. Nothing is solid. In the dreams, nothing is solid. Nothing. In what way? I'll... 
I'll be in a chair or in bed. And suddenly the whole room will go soft. Soft, as though the furniture were flesh, suppurating flesh. And the walls, the walls are made of hair. It's as though, as though everything that shouldn't be is alive, but dying. Look, have you seen a doctor? Yes. <laughs> Sleeping pills. They don't help. They don't stop the dreams. Well, what brought all these dreams on? I'm not sure. But I think I know. What? I think they're coming for me. Who? I'm not mad, you know. No, I know that. But I think they're coming for me. And when they do, when they come for me, James, all hell's going to be let loose. Oh, James. Such a short while ago, I was so happy. I'd become warden, and I was so happy. Now I can't trust a thing I see. My nights are all nightmare, and I feel as though my very veins are filled with worms. Now listen to me. I'm going to refer to you as warden again, because what I have to say has a very real bearing on your career. Somehow, either with the help of doctors or psychiatrists or your own willpower, you have got to pull yourself together. You have got to pull yourself together, warden. I mean, you know the college is too clever to be forgiving. Now, I know what's happening to you is causing you great distress. God, I can see that all too clearly, and I want to help. And if at any time, day or night, you need that help, I want you to pick up the phone and call me. Will you do that? Yes. Good. Right. Let's see if we can get you to eat something. Well, thank you again, James, for listening to my tale of woe. I did ask you to tell me. You don't think I'm mad, do you? Oh, of course not. Certainly no more than anyone else in this place, anyway. <laughs> not very reassuring. Uh, would you like some tea or something? I think not. I'd best go up to my rooms. Mm. I've got quite a bit of paperwork to do. Again, thanks for everything. I'll never forget your kindness. And don't forget either what I said in the restaurant. I won't. You have my word. Any time, day or night, if you need my help, just pick up that phone and call me. I will. Any time. Just call. James Montague. They've come back, James. They've come back. Worse hmm? than before. Worse. I'm on my way. They're behind the living things. What? The ones that shouldn't be alive. What? Do you understand? Hmm? Behind the living things that shouldn't be alive are other living things. Things I can't see. I can only hear them. Can you hear them, James? Warden, I hear nothing. They're crawling in my ears. Something's coming. Something on its Look, way. I don't understand. I'm sorry, but I just don't understand. You do think I'm mad. I knew you did. I knew it. Look, Warden. To hell with what you think. Simon. I know what's happening to me. They're coming for me. And they think I can't hear them. But I do. I do. Oh, dear God. I do. Help me, James. Please. Please. Help me. I can't help you, Simon. I wish I could. You said you would. Look, seeing you like this, I realized that I was right when I said you needed a psychiatrist. Somebody no, who... no. Simon, help me. You, help me. Look, I can't. You can. Listen, you can. How? I know what brings them. It's that. What? That. Over there on the mantel shelf. That black figurine that Matthew gave me. It's that that brings them. It's crazy, isn't it? But it's that that brings them. You're not serious, are you? Never more so. What, the figurine brings them? Yes. There's something about that writing at the base of it. I want you to find out what it means. Why don't you ask Matthew? I have. And? He says the writing is unknown. I don't know if that's true, but I do know it brings them. Find out for me, James, and tell me what it says. Ah, James! At last! 
must. I want a word with you. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lord Medway, but I'm in rather a hurry. I've had a call from the warden. He wants to see me at once. Well, I'm glad he wants to see someone. He's been locked away in those lodgings of his for the past week. Yes, I... But this is hopeless behaviour by someone yes. who is supposed to be warden. I, really... I don't mind telling you that everyone now wishes we had appointed Matthew to the post. Look, I'm really sorry, but I, I don't have time to stop and talk now. And for that matter, where have you been locking yourself away for well, the past two foreign, weeks? Well, foreign travels is all I can say. Where to? Uh, that's, that's all I can say, I'm afraid. Look, I, I must go. James, this isn't good enough. We can't have a warden behaving like a lunatic. There's got to be some explaining. Well, don't worry, there will be. There uh, will J James! Be. And soon. <laughs> Mad as hatters, both of them. Last week, marks began to appear on the fabric. My furniture was suddenly smashed by unknown hands. This week, scratches too. Terrible scratches on the doors, as though made by animal teeth and claws. And the glass too, the glass, the windows. You can see, you can see for yourself. Yes, I can see. And what do you think, my friend? You think I made these marks? You think I made them? You asked me to come because you said you had a note from Matthew. Yes. Yes, here it is. Listen to what he's written. Whatever this matter is between us, it has to be resolved. We must meet in the new quadrangle at midnight. We must finish a matter between us that I think you already understand. You have to be there. You have to. Midnight, then. Then you'll have to go, won't you? I can't. They're coming. Whatever they are, they're coming. I should have guessed it would be All Saints' Night. Well, I'm certainly not going. I'm sorry, Simon, but this is something that cannot be avoided. You found out, haven't you? You found out what the writing on the figurine says. Haven't you? I know what it means. I can't go. Well, if you don't, you will lose the post of warden. I just want an end of all this. Then be at the new quadrangle before midnight. Is it really the only way? Oh, yes. Don't worry. I'll be with you. This is strange. I don't like it at all, James. Not at all. I think it was a mistake coming here. You had to come. It was a mistake, believe me. There was no escaping it. Honest to God, James. There's something not right here. Look, there's nothing we can do. Your being here is not really a matter of choice. You know that. But where is Moore, then? He'll be here at midnight, just as he said. What time is it now? It's nearly time. There. Look. Over there in those shadows. That's him, isn't it? I think so. He'll step from the darkness in a few seconds. What in God's name is that, that sound? I don't know. But I know it has little to do with God. It's coming from over there, across the quadrangle. Oh, my God. What's happening here? Easy now, easy. The moment's almost come. It's past the middle gate. I can't stand this. I can't. You... I don't care what you say. I can't. You've got to. Oh. The sweet heavens. It's something like a man. Something like a man. Lord, the smell of it. He's here. Matthew's here. Look. Stepping from those shadows. Oh God help us both. And at the first stroke of midnight, I am here as I said. Although I didn't mean you to come, James. Still, no matter what is to be, will be. What in Christ's name is this thing approaching us? In Christ's name, I suppose it would be the power of evil. In my name, it is my lord and master. A master I have served for years. And now comes a time to repay that service. You took what was mine, Simon, and you have to pay for that. You have to pay, and the time is now. There always comes a time to pay. Sandeth, Satanaeus, Bladach, Bachem, Holdeth, Nathareth. Come, Lord. Holdeth, Nathareth. Come to thy servant. There's nothing you can do, James. Nothing on this Come earth. Come to thy servant. You're both about to enter hell. Come. To thy servant, Lord, come for thy servant. No, my lord, wait, my lord. Thy servant calls thee, he calls thee. No! Thy servant calls thee, Lord. Take thy servant, Lord, for he calls thee. My master, my master.
James. It's all right. It's all over now. But what happened? You fainted, and I brought you back up here. I mean, before I fainted. Look, take it easy now. We saw it, didn't we? Yes. I mean, we really did see it moving towards us. Yes. I'm not sure. I can't trust myself, can't trust my thoughts. Then I'll tell you what I saw. No. I don't think I like want to Like you, Simon, I saw this creature, something like a man but a greater statue, and black, coming towards us, its movements liquid. I am right, aren't I, Simon? I can see it now as it came, forming and, and reforming itself. I can smell the stench of rot, of decay. I can hear that sound. I'm right, aren't I? Oh, God, help me. He did. What do you mean? Matthew had summoned from the bowels of the earth, or wherever it is that evil resides, the power that we call the devil. He'd summoned him, or to be more correct, begged him to appear and take you away. Well, as we saw only too well, he appeared all right and he came towards you. Extending that arm, that hideous arm. Yes, an arm that seemed made of thousands and thousands of flies. So why was I spared? You were spared because Matthew started calling out in an ancient tongue, a language as chilling as the grave itself. It was what I needed. I knew the Annunciation now, not just the translation. You were calling out the inscription written on the figurine, weren't you? Yes. And that's when I fainted. And it's also when that creature from hell became confused. As I called out to it, Come, Lord, take thy servant, it turned towards its true servant, Matthew. It saw the look of pure reverence in his eyes. It embraced him, enfolded him so completely, it was impossible to tell the two apart. And then it seemed to soften and spread out like mist across the quadrangle. In seconds, it was gone, leaving behind only the corpses of endless flies. It was certainly lucky I'd learned the inscription on that figurine. My journey abroad was not for nothing, I'm pleased to say. Oh, thank God you were there, James. Mm, indeed. And now? Now you must think no more about it. Oh, impossible. Oh, you must try. You have a college to salvage and a missing person to report. But what do I say? Well, I think you simply say that Matthew seems to have disappeared from the face of the earth. Is that enough? Well, it's enough for now, I think. It'll certainly give everyone something to talk about. Eh? <laughs> so the inscription simply said, Come, Lord, take thy servant. Yes. You know, I don't suppose the Prince of Darkness is ever to be trusted. But it may be that sometimes he keeps exactly to his word.